Good morning, everyone. Today, we are going to do a very quick introduction to flatworms and roundworms. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about the flatworms because we are going to be doing a lab looking at some behaviors of a flatworm. Um, roundworms, they give me the heebie-jeebies. As you can see by this round worm in this person's eyeball. So we're not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about those. Um, but these are more examples of simple animals. So they are all part of the kingdom Animalia. And the two phyla are platyhelminthes for the flatworms. I remember this because plat and flat, they rhyme. Um, and then round worms are nematoda. They get the O, so they're round. So the of the animals in Platyhelminthes, some of the things that they have in common is that they have three germ layers, endoderm, ectoderm, and mesoderm. As you maybe recall from the Cnidarian notes, Cnidarians only have endoderm and ectoderm, so now we have that third germ layer added in there. This is where we start to see bilateral symmetry, so a left and a right side, and also sepalization. We see the formation of a head. So this is the basic anatomy of a planarian, um, a type of flatworm. We're going to talk about what all these structures do. They have a mouth and a pharynx. They have um, nerves. They have structures towards the anterior end called ganglia, which are very, you can think of it as almost like the brain. It's not quite a brain, it's not as complex, but they're clusters of nerves and they have eye spots. They also have these structures called flame cells. Form and function. They are mostly carnivores or scavengers. And most are parasitic. Not the planaria that we are going to play with in the lab, but some examples of flatworms are tapeworms, and those are parasites. As far as reproduction, many are hermaphroditic, which means that one animal makes both eggs and sperm. They can also reproduce asexually by fission, which is if you split it in half, it will regrow. Um, they have thin bodies that allow for materials to diffuse through respiration, excretion, and circulation. And then they also have structures on, along their sides. These um, are called flame cells. These are specialized cells that help remove excess water because they live in aquatic environments. These are the locations of the different flame cells on the sides of the planaria. So in terms of digestion, flatworms are similar to cnidarians in that they only have one opening where food and waste enters and exits, and they have a gastrovascular cavity. Flatworms like this planaria has a long tube coming from the um, bottom of it that's called the pharynx and it is for food collection so it sucks up food into the body of the planarian into the gastrovascular cavity planarian will digest it and waste will come out that same end we also see in planarians the beginnings of the formation of a head or cephalization Um, planarians, they have um, a head that encloses groups of nerves called ganglia that are sensory organs. Long nerve cords run along the sides of each body, as you can see in these um, yellow sort of stripes that go along the sides. And they also have eye spots. It makes them look kind of cross-eyed, um, but these are groups of cells that detect changes in the amount of light so they can see. So there are different groups of flatworms. By living flatworms, like this planarian, live in fresh or marine water. 
and you can see the little eye spots make them look cross-eyed the one that we are going to look at is um, a brown planaria known as Dugigia. They live in fresh water and they're mostly scavengers but can also feed on protists like amoebas that are floating in the water. Next we have tapeworms. Tapeworms, they are parasites that could live in your intestines. They will absorb nutrients from the host. You can get tapeworms from eating undercooked meat. So again, we can see um, the beginnings of cephalization here in this tapeworm. They have something called a scolex, which is a structure that contains um, suckers and or hooks that will allow them to adhere to your intestines. And then each of the little segments in the tapeworm, they're called uh, proglottids. These um, can break off of the tapeworm and they get eliminated in feces and could spread that way. Um, but each individual proglottid contains both male and female parts. These are also hermaphroditic. Next, we have roundworms. These are all in the phylum Nematoda. These are unsegmented worms. And what these have that are sort of evolutionary milestones is we see the beginnings of a coelom or pseudocoelom, a body cavity, and they have a complete digestive system. So a coelom is a fluid-filled body cavity that usually contains organs. And the coelom, in order for it, uh, for it to be a true coelom, it has to be completely lined with mesoderm. So flatworms, they don't have this. They're known as acelomates. So here is, um, if you were to cut one of those cute little planarians in half and look at its um, gastrovascular cavity, you'd see endoderm, and you see its gastrovascular cavity here, but then it would be a solid mass of cells. So we'd have the mesoderm and then the ectoderm surrounding it. Roundworms, they do have a body cavity. So here's their digestive tract, and then there is an actual gap in between the digestive tract and the outer covering of the body. But this is only partially lined with mesoderm. Only the endoderm, uh, ectoderm, is um, connected to the mesoderm. You notice that there isn't any mesoderm surrounding the endoderm. Where in true coelomates, they, um, they still have that opening, that body cavity. But both the endoderm and the ectoderm is aligned with mesoderm. So nematodes are said to have a pseudocelum or a false coelom because their endoderm does not have a layer of mesoderm around it. But they do still have that separation between the outer body covering and the uh, inner lining of the digestive system. The other notable thing about roundworms is that we finally see a complete digestive system in the animal kingdom. This is a digestive tract with two openings, a mouth and an anus. Before, when we looked at um, cnidarians and um, platyhelminthes, there was only one opening that served as for food to enter and ways to exit. But now we have a place where food can enter in the mouth and a place where waste can exit through the anus. Roundworms, they are predators and parasites to both humans and other animals.